snowing again. I have to shovel the driveway again. It's not even January. I feel like I've shoveled more this year than I did all of last year. But I gotta do it. That snow is way too heavy right now. And the infuriating part is it's still snowing. Let's come back out and do it again later. But it'll be easier later. Well, last night when I got home from crappy fishing, I was way too tired to do anything with them. Uh, I was up all night working the night before. Went out fishing all day. By the time I got home, I'd been up 24 hours. The last thing I wanted to do was cut up some fish. So I just set them outside on the back deck. It's uh <laughs> Pretty insulated out there, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut them up now. Kind of show you how to flay crappie. That's a problem a lot of people have. Uh, so we'll do that. Maybe do some cooking and uh, go from there. All right, pretty much set up to go here. Uh, you don't need much. Just want some newspaper, good sharp fillet knife, bag to put your guts and whatnot, and uh, some crappies. We've got some snow on it, so I'm gonna get a little rinsed. You don't need to. I actually find that frozen fish are a little easier to, to cut than, than not. So you want to start making your cut here and you want to try and get underneath the scales. You're going to dull your knife hard if you don't. Um, I'm going to go kind of all the way down like that uh, through. You want to find the backbone with your knife and you only want to go about this far down. That's where most of the meat ends and the ribs start. Um, you just want to kind of follow the backbone that way. Just feel it there. Back along the dorsal fin. And once you get to the narrow part of the tail here, um, then you can poke through. Sorry, I'm block it all. Try to go through a little bit early there. Been a while since I've done one of these. To get done that part, you just want to kind of follow the scrape along the ribs here. Get as much of that as you can. It's good, clean white meat. belly. So that there is all going to be pretty boneless meat set aside. This is cold on the hands man. Alright so I'm through that now. That was pretty painful. My, uh, my knife is super dull so I think it's going to be Trying to pick up a new one, or at least get a good sharpen on that, or you have a sharpener. Um, so at that point, it's time to just dispose of all the skins and guts. Um, you know, from eight little crappies, that's the meat I got. Um, decent little fillets on them, you know, nothing crazy. And I kind of butchered them a little bit too. Some of my fish eating buddies might be a little upset with me on that, but. It is what it is. It's been a long time since I've fillet some crappy, but got it done. I dispose of this. Um, these are compostable here, so I compostable bag. Um, tie that all up and get it into the green bin. And pick up tomorrow or something. So yeah, pick ups tomorrow. So they're not going to sit there stinking. It's cold anyway. Get rid of that. Now you want to give these a rinse and just pat dry them and uh, throw them in the fridge, or if you're cooking them now, then get on to that point.
I'll just let that kind of soak up for a second after I pat it there. Um, big things you just don't, you don't want to be wet going into the fridge. And uh, this kind of allows to soak up any blood that might be draining out of the meat as well. These ones are frozen so they weren't really bleeding that much. So you can see some little blood speckles on there but not much. Overall you're in pretty good shape. Um, we've got plans for dinner later so I'm going to eat these either midnight snack tonight or have them for breakfast tomorrow. Let's get them. So now you just want to make sure you squeeze the air out. Give it a little fold like that just to get as much air out as possible. Okay, good to go. So that's, you know, a meal for one or a large snack for two. Took eight little crappies to get that. Um, good thing they're plentiful. They are delicious. All right, so I'm about ready to start cooking up some of this crappie here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a homemade beer batter, deep fry it, because uh, I'm a fat kid and I love love deep frying. Uh, I normally prefer peanut oil. I don't have any, so I'm just going to use vegetable oil. That's fine. I got a fryer here. I got from Cabela's last year. Uh, I just want to see where my line is here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Make sure I can see my max line. Just want to get this going. You can do this in a pan. You don't need a deep fryer, but uh, it's nice to have. This is coming out slow. Alright, so a little change in plans. Uh, the deep fryer wouldn't turn on. Good times. So I've got, I just transferred the oil into a pot. You need a bunch of your ingredients now. Uh, you want your fish, flour, kind of some spices that you want in it, salt, pepper. I use a bit of paprika and garlic powder as well. Uh, you want an egg, which uh, again, my lack of preparation, I don't have an egg. So you can use a little bit of vegetable oil in place of an egg. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can use. Uh, applesauce, um, which I don't have, of course. Um, you can use banana. It's actually a good egg replacement, but again, I don't really want to add a banana flavor to it, so I'm not going to do that. Um, we want to start off with throw a cup of flour, um, kind of just eyeball the garlic powder. It's really a couple tablespoons probably you want uh, paprika. Probably about the same. Um, again, I'll just kind of eyeball it and go with your taste, right? If you don't want paprika, don't put paprika in. Um, salt, that's just, that's going to be easier. Put some in there like that. Uh, pepper, and a couple teaspoons or something like that. Um, should put the flour away. I'm going to want a second bowl of flour to dredge the fish in first. Um, that's probably good. Don't need too much. Um, we want to just kind of whisk that flour around. So I'm going to go ahead. Normally I'd have the egg now. I'm going to put just a little bit of vegetable oil. Um, get that going. Can opener is, but luckily, get spilling everywhere. Um, for the beer, don't put it all in at once. Um, sometimes it's a little too much. You want to just kind of whisk as you go and get it to the viscosity that you want. Uh, cold beer is better. Normally I actually prefer uh, Coors Light for this recipe. I don't like drinking Coors Light but um, it's good for the recipe. 
I uh, I got MGD because that's what I have in the fridge. Spilling all over. Um, so you can see once that's mixed in, that's pretty thick still. Um, I'm gonna want to add some more. Make sure you get it all mixed in. You don't want just layers of beer hanging around. You want it mixed in. Um, so we're getting there, but it's still a little thick. We won't need too much more beer. definitely mixes a lot better with egg than it does with the oil, but the oil will do. So I think I've got it about where I want it now. Uh, you want it not runny, it's got to coat your fish obviously. Um, but it's still it's thick, but it's, so that's about where you want it. Um, a little behind on the oil since I had that little mishap. So I'm going to cut the video for a minute till that gets heated up and we'll go from there. I think the oil's close to done. If you don't have a thermometer, you can just splash a couple drops of water on it and if you hear it pop and crackle like it is there, then it's probably about ready to go. Don't put too much water, you'll get yourself into trouble, but just a, a quick little spray like that you should be fine so we've got the crappie what you want to do just take a piece and just dredge it in the flour uh, i add a little bit of salt and pepper to the flour but it's not necessary um, just give it a little coating around in there just drain off your excess and layer in the fryer The reason for the flour is it just helps the batter stick a little bit. It makes the batter a little thicker too. Um, it's not a required step by any means, but that's the way I do it. Again, drain off your excess. There we go. I'm going to do this in a couple batches, uh, which is fine by me. When Tongs Attack, episode one. So the crappie is a really thin white fish. You don't have to give it too much time in here. Uh, a couple minutes. Basically you want your batter to be golden. Um, you will want to flip it just to get Make sure it cooks evenly, both sides of the batter are good to go. I use tongs, a lot of these, just a slotted spoon. My bowls are about ready. Just want to put them on some paper towel or newspaper, whatever. Just drain some of that oil, let them cool off a little bit. In the meantime, get another batch going. Try this little piece here. Not perfect. Nice crispy batter. Fish. Nice and flaky. 
still really hot. I wait a minute on the rest of that. Yeah. All right, so that was our crappy meal. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you try that beer batter recipe. If you do, let me know what you think. Um, the wife and I are gonna go out and check out a movie. We haven't been out to a movie for a while. My son is at, uh, playing at Grandma's for a couple days, so we'll take advantage. We'll go out, I think we're gonna see passengers. Um, but yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, it'll be a couple days before I put out another video blog. Um, going to do the family thing for a couple days. We didn't get to do it right over Christmas, so um, yeah, we'll be back after that. There's cold temps in the forecast, which is good, so hopefully the next time we'll be on the ice.